Hi, in this tutorial we will discuss effective React query keys or tense stack query keys. Um, query keys are basically a way of uh, defining a key for a particular query so that it is uniquely defined across the entire app. And then you know you can use that query, query key to basically refresh the query or do anything with it, you know, invalidate it, cancel it, etc. But there are certain ways in which query keys are defined by most people, that is, they are hard coded and there are certain practices which are not followed which should be followed in order to make basically you know make your experience better while using tan stack query or react query so basically we'll dis uh, today discuss this um this is a bl blog which i will you know take an as, as an example and make a video out of so if you want to read it yourself you can uh, read it i will uh, link it in the description but let's get into it so the first problem and the main problem is other things are you know, not that important but the first and most important thing is that you shouldn't hard code your query keys what does this mean for so for example you have a query let's say um let's use query and it says get to do's right and you know basically it's a query uh, where you are getting your to do's i'm not i'm not specifying the function so let's say somewhere in the app you are using the query client query client is equal to use query client and you are let's say fetching uh, refetching the query after updating a record or something so you are doing query client dot refetch queries and then you're hard coding this key here as well cool so now what what to happen is uh, you have used a query key a hard coded query key in two places so accidentally if you change it here this means that this particular portion would not work because now the query key is different maybe you don't change it accidentally maybe you add something to it because now your query expects a new param maybe get to do's expects you know a category variable now let's say i pass uh, something like um, notes here so now because the query key expects a notes param as well and you haven't passed the notes param here it would fail this query won't be refreshed um so basically you shouldn't hard code your uh, query keys you should you know make some function in case of dynamic query key let's say you know there is a query key where uh, the first um, item is to do's but the second items is you know like the to do id or something then you should use a function for it in case where it's just strings and they're hard coded they can be you know like a constant as well but they shouldn't be hard coded everywhere so that is was the point so also and on top of that we can create a factory for a group of query keys and that would help us a lot because we will mostly reuse stuff so here i can create a factory so factory would be an object where each property would be a query key for a particular key uh, particular query belonging to that group so in this case let's say i have um five queries related to to do's so there is one query four queries actually um there is one query which would list all the to do's but only the id at the name so it's uh, you know i just want to display them in a list that is what i will do then there is another query in which i want to fetch the list but i want to filter them by you know some filter let's say i want to say that I don't want the archived uh, to do's to be shown etc you know so one query can be that then another query can be to fetch a particular to do based on id and then another query can be that i want to fetch the to do's in the same fashion that i was fetching in the list case when i was fetching you know every to do but now i want the full to do object you know everything so i can say i want to fetch all to do details so let's you know make query keys for them uh, let's say i can um i can make one query key for just to do's because you know um uh, if you want to refetch all to do's or if you want to cancel the queries with all to do's i can you know use this and then i can say const to do's list is equal to i can say to do's and list and then another one can be to do's list by filter so I can copy this and I can you know pass a filter object let's say archived should be equal to false so this is one query key 
then I can say to do's by ID is equal to to do's and then some ID let's say you know, set it to four and then here I would say to do's details so it would be to do's and then details so these are the four query keys basically this one is a catch all so that we can you know do something with all the query keys because it is matching everything um so now we can say that there are some things which are being reused to do's is being reused everywhere then this particular to do's list is being reused here and the to do's list by filter query key so we can basically create an object where we can use you know reuse stuff uh, which can be reused so the query key factory for to do's would look like this so i will say to do square key um, is equal to all so this will be to do's so if i want to do something for all to do's then i have to do's list that would be um, an array where i am uh, where is that to do square key where I am spreading to do key dot all and it would be a function and then here I am saying list right so in next case to do list by filter I need the to do list query key because I'm reusing these two things so I can say a function where I am spreading to do square key dot to do list or I can you know just call it list and list by filter that is better so I am using list because I'm using these two but uh, particular things to do is list and this query key and then here I can you know pass a param here so I can say archived boolean so this filter goes here and then there is can be find by id so that would be you know i'm using this all thing so i can you know copy this and then here i will pass the id which would come the from this particular function and then to for to do's by detail i will copy this and then here i would say details and then here i would say detail so now you can see that I kind of did the same thing as above, but I made use of the previous things as well if they were reusable. For example, all was reusable everywhere, so I reused it everywhere. List was reusable in, in this particular query key in case of filtering, so I reused it here, and then you know all the other things. So I can now use this these query keys directly using you know um, to do query key dot all to do query key list etc. Uh, the whole app, and you know I wouldn't have to hard code everything and then if I make a change here then it would replicate everywhere so there would be no error you know everything would work fine cool <clears throat> so this was the most important thing other things are not um, that complex so then I have don't mix query keys uh, so basically um, there are two hooks uh, for querying which uh, the query provides so it's use query and then it's there is also another use infinite query so as in this so in case of use infinite query you basically make a request to an endpoint which is which has pagination enabled so basically you are paginating with this and obviously that would be a different endpoint you are making a request to something else use query even if it's for the same thing in this case let's say you are um, you know you are making a query using the use query hook for to do's as well and for the, uh, using the use infinite query hook as well you are making a request to get to do's but it would be a different endpoint you are getting a paginated output in this case for use query you are not getting a paginated output and it's a different uh, endpoint so you wouldn't you you shouldn't use the exact query keys because query keys are basically global they are not uh, you know scoped to use query so if you use the query key here and you use the same one here then what would happen is that use infinite query would not run the query because based on which query gets uh, resolved first so for example this query gets completed first the other query would you know if it gets called later in the app 
it would use the cache from here it wouldn't call itself you know it which it should because it's a different endpoint so you should use different um query keys for these two hooks not the same um then array keys um use query hook and use infinite query hook provide us with uh, you know either we can pass a string um okay so it's not letting me but in some cases um, maybe it's a, a recent version not answer query but uh, in drag query uh, you can pass uh, array keys as well uh, string keys as well so you should always pass array keys because in most cases you will pass array keys because you know you would want the array key to be done uh, you would want the key to be dynamic you would know you would maybe pass an id or something so and also even if you pass string query keys on the back end of the library that is in the library itself it does get converted into an array so it's better to use an array query key everywhere in order to you know have consistency then structure okay let's talk about collocation and then structure so collocation is that let's say in this case i made a to do query key factory and these are the five things so i should collocate them you know maybe i should make a folder with all the queries related to do's and i should collocate this particular thing inside a file let's say query key.ts inside that folder so all the query keys should reside in their particular group of queries there should have been there shouldn't be one global um you know like types.ts or constant.ts that we normally have and you know all the query keys there query keys should be co-located so that you can find them easily and work with them easily and then structure finally so um the way query keys should be created is you should basically think about query grouping so let's say i say constructor and let's say there are some modules in an application you know there is a landing page that has some stuff going on there's a home page that has you know some queries running and then maybe you know the page uh, sign up sign in page something so first of all you can group these queries by the module name or the page name whatever so i can say um let's say there is a module uh, where i'm doing scheduler related things you know there is scheduler calendar and stuff like that so i can say scheduler here why am uh, why is it the first keyword because let's say i want to refetch all the queries of scheduler app or the module or i want to cancel all queries or do anything with it i can use basically just use the scheduler word and it would cancel all queries or refetch all queries uh, which have the scheduler keyword then let's go down the grouping chain then what are the query uh, queries related to the queries are related to to-dos so now i can say to do's now what are the queries doing um this particular query is listing the to do's or based you know uh, basically an endpoint is related to listing so i can then say list then what is it doing um this particular endpoints list them but there's another endpoint which filters the listed um to do's as well so now then i can pass the filter here as well so you see how i'm structuring the query and we basically do it from the top to the bottom so we are grouping the queries and we group them from top to bottom in this case i'm first grouping them by a module or app and inside your web app you know it can be a sub app or something and then the grouping the the queries based on the resource so in this case all the these queries are basically you know doing something with to do's there can be some group of queries which are doing something with user you know signing up signing in authentication they can have a separate group you will then write user here and then you know what are they doing uh, they are you know getting something by id they are listing the to do's they are fetching details of to do's they are deleting them they are you know that is mutation but uh, whatever they are doing then it can go here then if you want to go further down you are doing something else with the um, query then you can you know add another uh, query key item so that's how you should structure your query keys so yeah that's it for the tutorial i'm pretty sure after watching this tutorial you will be able to um, you know use these best practices to structure your query keys better and make your lives easier and you know avoid bugs and everything so that's it for the tutorial if you like it you can like the video or you know comment down below if you have any questions or queries as always like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye